Kristen, welcome back. Part two. Part two, round <laughs> Part two. two. The baby's sleeping for now. The dogs are out and about. So if you hear some nails on the floor, that's exactly what that is. We're trying to cram <laughs> this in there before the baby wakes up crying or hungry or whatever. Um, but we're going to pick up exactly, exactly where we just left off. Um, if you haven't uh, heard our previous episode, we talked about the entire pregnancy. Kristen did an amazing job of giving a, a lot of tips and a lot of insight and very valuable information of our slash her pregnancy. And uh, so yeah, the delivery day, let's go, let's go right to the delivery day, March 23rd. We're going to, this is going to be all about the delivery process. Everything that we learned delivery day, don't, you know, wasn't actually on the 23rd. Yeah. Right. I know. <laughs> but, so that's, yeah. that's part of, that is part of this is the entire process, everything that we learned along the way. Some things we were kind of told ahead of time, a lot we learned through the process or even afterwards. And I think we looked at each other a few times and said, wow, I, I didn't know this. I No one told us this. I wasn't expecting this. And that was another reason I really wanted to this episode was because I feel like we can both give some really, really good and valuable information for people that are going through this, uh, will go through this, or know someone that's possibly going to go through this. So let's get cracking. Uh, I believe it was that what Thursday, March 21st, mm -hmm. was it 21st? March 21st? Yeah. And that was my original due date, um, that was scheduled. Um, I had gone in at 37 weeks, uh, for my regular checkup. And, um, I believe I said this in part one where I was, I was measuring early. And so they did a scan. They said the baby was measuring at seven pounds already. Um, and so they had, already scheduled me to be induced on my due date because he was measuring large and I am a smaller frame. Um, so it was just kind of a precaution to not let me go, uh, too far long at 40 weeks after 40 weeks. Um, so that's when I went to my 40 week appointment that Thursday morning and, um, they were doing their normal like cervix check. I hadn't been dilated at all. Um, but because I, they sent me for another non-stress test for the baby, uh, which is referred to as an NST. Um, he also failed that one. And so they said, let's not wait for your induction at 9 PM on Thursday. Let's just get you there now. So Thursday yeah, so morning, you, you had a scheduled induction for that night. Correct. And so this, yeah. So this is why uh, men and women listen to this. This is why it's very important to have your car packed already, ready to go, the bag, everything that you need for multiple days. Um, that's even something we can give tips about perhaps even on, on the next episode. Or actually, you know, if you want to do this episode, yeah, let's do this episode. Um, some tips of what you can put in your bag. We can get there momentarily, but have your bag packed, have it in the car at all times because you just never know when you're going to the hospital and you're not coming back for a few days. And that's kind of what happened. Yeah. Um, so again, like Ryan mentioned, I had a scheduled induction for later that evening where I was going to check into the hospital and start the process. But, um, based on my appointment earlier that morning, my midwife, um, basically said, let's just send you there. Now there's no point in waiting. Um, beds are filling up and we don't want your induction getting, um, pushed plus baby is not, um, passing his stress test. So, um, let's, let's get this party started uh, a little bit sooner than scheduled. Um, and the hospital is right next to where the, um, midwife office is at the, the doctor's office. So it wasn't that far of a trek. Um, so basically Ryan and I <laughs> looked at each other and left, left the hospital said, all right, this is it. Um, we're starting early. And, um, I let work know that I basically wasn't, wasn't coming in, which is funny. I actually, I just had a strange feeling. And I, I remember I went to bed at like 2 AM and woke up at like five, just worked until 2 AM, finished my work and then woke up early to just make sure I could check everything off the list. Um, cause I had a feeling I was not coming back from that doctor's appointment. Mm. Um, yeah. I, for whatever dumb reason, I took the bag <laughs> out of the car, except for yours. I remember really saying yours. to you, are you sure? I was like, let's put my bag in the car. I was like, are you sure you don't want your bag? You're like, nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah. know why. Well, fortunately, when they sent you over to the hospital, it wasn't emergency situation. It was right. let's just get you checked in. Yeah. And so everything, we got you checked process. in. Yeah, we got you checked in, which gave me time to head back home, get what I needed, let the dogs out. I took care of you know all three of our dogs. Um, 
took a shower, did everything I had to do. So I was like, all right, now I'm not coming back. And I also got some last minute items for you, which was, I think, very And you, and it was fine that you left me because lucky enough, my sister had showed up at like, you know, she was around and she just decided to, to have sister intuition and be there um, in the parking lot next to us. And then she took me to the hospital, helped me with the check-in process. And she had uh, delivered there two years earlier. And, uh, that gave you a chance to go home and collect things. So yep. after was- a couple hours, I came and met you and, uh, yeah. So pick up from there, Kristen. Okay. Yeah. So in the hospital, you do all your check-in stuff. Um, it's, it's nice. Cause I didn't have having a scheduled induction is a little easier than, Oh my gosh, my water breaks. And, you know, you kind of, you know, go into labor at home. The, my, in a perfect world, um, I was at, I was at peace with being induced, but it would have been nice to kind of have that experience, I guess, of like, Oh, you're, you know, you start the labor process at home, your, you know, your water breaks. And then I I don't know, I don't know if you just want to experience that or if like, that's what they prepare you for. It's what you see kind of, happen. Um, but this was also just kind of nice because you had kind of a plan for a plan of action every step of the way. Um, there wasn't this panic of, oh my gosh, at what point did we go to the hospital? It was, all right, this is this is the time we show up and and now we're there and, and we start the process. Um, Ryan, I don't know if you have any, like if you have any like, oh, kind of wanted to experience it like, you know, the, the crazy way. <laughs> but, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think we see too many movies and TV shows where that's what you see. And I don't think that's kind of what most people get. I don't, I just don't think that happens a lot. A lot of it is scheduled. I think the schedule is nice. Honestly, I was excited that it was going to be scheduled at night gave us a chance to sleep in and kind of rest and relax a little bit because it is a very anxious day or and or a week. And so I was kind of happy. I was like, all right, let's just get some sleep. Let's sleep in, even take a nap or something later. Just kind of have like a lazy day because yeah, we were both planning on being off that day. Like I was just planning. Yeah, on, like, I mean, I was off, work. but, but knowing that you're going to be sleeping in a hospital for a few days, not just sleeping, but you're going to be stressed and sleeping kind of terribly and all that stuff. I was excited. It was a nighttime check in, honestly, and that, that didn't work out, but, uh, everything else did. So yeah, keep going. Yeah. So, um, my induction was scheduled for 321, which was my 40 week due date. Um, and so the plan for me was that, um, they were going to start the induction. What that meant for me was because I wasn't dilated at all. My cervix had not dilated. Um, they had to do a Foley bulb, uh, placement, um, and a Foley bulb, um, induction, is a procedure that induces labor where a doctor, um, and again, everyone just kind of gets technical and, uh, you know, if you're squeamish when it comes to like, you know, uh, surgeries or any type of like medical procedures, this might not be a podcast for you, but, um, a Foley bulb inductions where, um, they induce labor where a, the doctor inserts a small balloon, uh, catheter into your cervix. Um, and helps dilate it faster. Um, So they fill it with saline solution and they leave it in there for 12 hours. Um, And what they did for me was actually a cook catheter, which is like two fully fully bulbs that they fill with fluid. Um, It's a double balloon. It was um, absolutely horrible. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Would you say a 10 out of 10 on the pain scale? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was um, just the insertion alone they had difficulty with. um, And you're not on any medication. Uh, so if you've ever had any, I don't know, it's, I don't really know how to describe it, but the cervix is way up there. And if it's not open at all, it's what they're pretty much, they're putting something up there to open it. Um, and then it stays in you for 12 hours. So, so Chris, Kristen, take a moment and think if you were listening to this podcast, knowing that you were going to, this was going to happen to you at some point, what would you want to know about this induction process? I'm not, and I'm not trying to scare anyone. I was also very swollen and just uncomfortable in general to where just a simple cervix check was uncomfortable. So everyone's going to be different and you can obviously speak up and ask for pain medication. If that's what you choose to do. I tried to go the, you know, no pain medication route out at first. They didn't offer it to me, but you could have asked like, what are my options? Um, I also have a very, um, small, I, I'm, I am very, just very small and, and I'm not the most relaxed person. So it was a more difficult procedure for them to get it in in general. Um, 
And again, I was very swollen. So it took three speculums, three different sized speculums and some time and a lot of bleeding um, and tries for them to get this thing in. And then they finally did. And it was, Brian, you were holding my hand the whole time. And I I was absolutely miserable. Um, and then it's about an hour after they finally got, and there was, yeah, I don't know if I said there's just blood everywhere. Um, but as soon as <laughs> they got it in, um, I was fine for about an hour and a half and then it contraction started um, because my cervix started to dilate um, and I just had contractions one on top of one another. Like it was absolutely um, terrible. I was bent over like on a medicine ball, just in pain. Um, and I tried dealing with it as long as I could. Um, and then I opted for some pain medication, uh, which was, um, my gosh, Ryan, what was it called? Fentanyl. Yeah. They gave me yeah. fentanyl. Um, low dose of it right before bed just to help me sleep because um i think we mentioned in the beginning of this podcast my induction was scheduled for 9 p.m so that i could it could happen overnight and i could sleep um but they bumped me up to 4 p.m thursday at 4 p.m um is that's when they started it and so my 12 hours of that procedure started at 4 p.m on thursday and it was supposed to fall out at 4 a.m on uh friday it didn't end up falling out so they had to remove it at 4 a.m um, they did some service cervix checks. I was only at like uh, four uh, four centimeters dilated at that point, which is good because that's what the Foley bulb is for. Um, and then that's when they started the um, the pitocin, which actually induces the labor, starts the labor process. Um, so Brian, kind of backing up to your question, should someone be nervous getting a Foley bulb? I think you just get all your information. Um, if that's the type of induction that, unless you want to go into labor, try to go into labor naturally, sometimes if you are dilated, like a centimeter, there's other options. They could do like a membrane sweep, um, and do things that way. But I had no dilation at all. So they had, to, they had to start dilation on me, um, in order to get the labor process started and even like begin administering Pitocin because you can't administer Pitocin until you're somewhat dilated. Yeah. And so I, I just want to kind of paint a picture of kind of like what the room looked like, at least for us, really nice room. Uh, yeah. I'm happy with it. So you're on the basically hospital bed, um, and do all these crazy things, go up, down, recline, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, as the guy, I was on some kind of like a pot, if you will. Um, no complaints considering who else is in the room. It was a fold out couch. It was, it was, oh no, that was the. No, it wasn't a fold out couch. Yeah, it was. It was a fold out couch. Uh, well, in that room know. it was because you had your own TV and everything. I had my own TV, and with the NCAA tournament on, I wasn't complaining about that. And especially with you next to me, I couldn't complain about anything. Um, as the guy, don't expect to get a ton of great sleep, that's for sure. Especially, you know, as the woman, they they come and check on you consistently. Our nurses were the best. Um, so they did a really good job of knocking on the door throughout the night. Um, what every hour or two, perhaps, mm -hmm. um, early on check, yeah. to check on you. And so, yeah, so take us into Friday. So that was all day Thursday. And then we got Friday morning. So take us through Friday. Yeah. So Friday morning catheter got removed. Um, I'm able to walk around too, by the way. So even though that's, um, they have that, the fully bold in, I'm able to get up, walk around, take a shower, go to the bathroom, kind of do whatever uh, I need to do. There's nothing kind of like keeping you in a bed, which was my, my ultimate goal was to be able to keep moving um, as, as much as possible throughout this whole process. Um, so at 4 a.m., they take the, uh, on Friday morning, they take the fully bulb out, um, and then they begin the Pitocin, um, which is just in a, a drip, um, IV. Um, and it's basically, it's a, it's a medicine, um, which is a synthetic version of oxytocin. Um, oxytocin is the hormone that your body naturally produces to create contractions, uh, and induce, uh, induce contractions and induce labor. Um, and, um, Pitocin, um, basically again, like helps you dilate even more and gets the labor process moving. Um, and they were, how, how many, how many times did they, they come in to kind of up it, Ryan? Numerous. And do you want to talk about the swelling that also causes? Yeah. So I got Pitocin administered for about 24 hours. Um, they just kept upping it, upping it, and it made contractions um, come and go. Um, and uh, I didn't realize because I, I didn't really feel the effects of the 
Pitocin until after what? Until like Saturday, until after I had the baby. I had no idea because I had I had really no swelling the entire pregnancy um, when it came to like my ankles. Like even when I was laying in bed um, that Friday, the nurses looked at my feet and they were like, my ankles, they were like, you don't even look like you're pregnant when you look at your ankles and feet. It was <laughs> great. And then I just happened to look at my feet like what, that Saturday evening and I was like, what the hell happened? <laughs> Oh my God, my <laughs> legs were so swollen. I couldn't put shoes on. It was, it was absolutely terrifying. Um, but the Pitocin does make you swell like crazy. And I guess for me having that administered for like 24 hours, that was bound to happen. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm kind of jumping around a little bit. So they started administering the Pitocin at 7 a.m. that Friday morning um, throughout the day, they kept doing cervix checks to make sure, see if I was getting dilated or not. Um, I got to like, you know, about four and a half, five centimeters around 5 PM on Friday. Um, and that's when they decided to break my water, which was another interesting experience, um, to have your water broken. Um, just wild. I, I don't even know how to describe it. It was, uh, I had a lot of fluid in my belly and I felt all that come out. It was just like a rushing, like waterfall. I felt like <laughs> just when they break your water. But they, but they say it's, it's not like the movies, right? That's not what they say. It's like, it doesn't they just go all not, over the place. But because I had a lot of fluid, it, it, it was, I mean, it was, it was like coming out of me. It, it was like flowing out. Um, when it, when they did that, it was just wild. Um, it was, and it just kept coming, which was crazy. It was just like, like and it, even when they did the, the breaking of my water, like you could just, cause you're, again, you're still able to get up and walk around. Cause I, I took a shower, like an hour later, you still feel just like water kind of like coming out. Um, and then about two hours after that, I started to feel like the contractions. And so that's when it just really started to, to hit. Um, so at like 7 PM that Friday evening, that's when I opted for the epidural and I had gone back and forth a lot throughout the pregnancy debating whether I wanted an epidural or not, or if I wanted to try to like experience a natural labor, because once you get an epidural, you're strictly in the bed. You can't feel your legs. You can't get up and walk around anymore. And everything I was hearing and seeing online and, and researching was, you know, try to stay mobile, try to, you know, you don't want to stall labor, try to keep moving. Um, you know, I didn't want to experience any type of tear. So I wanted to just be in a very comfortable um, position and I didn't want to be like stuck on my back or anything like that. And I was worried that with an epidural, you'd be stuck on your back. Um, which I talked to the nurses ahead of time, um, and said that I want to be, you know, mobile. I want to move around. Um, but I will choose an epidural when, you know, when it's time. So please help me know, you know, kind of when we're getting to the point of no return. Um, cause I didn't want to be stuck doing that without an epidural. Mm. Um, and I guess another thing I want to mention before I get too far on here is like, you know, uh, have a, have a plan. There are all the, your, your midwives, your doctors are going to talk to you about having like a, a delivery plan or, and all that, and just have it, but know that it's going to, it could possibly change and know like all of your options. Um, this was my plan. My plan was to kind of get as far as I could with, um, out an epidural and then know when it was time to, to get one. Um, I got one. It wasn't scary at all. They were very good at administering it. Um, you just have to stay really still and, um, your nurses, um, and the anesthesiologist will guide you through it. Um, once it kicks in, you really can't feel anything. Um, my legs, I mean, they were, you know, poking me and everything. And I was like, wow, this is cr And I was having contractions, couldn't feel a thing. It was wild. It was, and you know, you, I don't regret not like, I don't regret getting it. It was great. Um, I don't know why more people wouldn't. <laughs> Uh, for one, I don't know why you'd want to feel that. I mean, again, it's some people want want the whole experience, but I was I was fine um, getting the epidural. Um, so then, you know, time keeps passing. I started getting some um, shakes and just like uh, fever, uh, spike to fever that wasn't going down. Um, I got really cold and I was like shivering really bad. Sometimes that's, I think, an effect of an epidural. Um, but in my case, I ended up getting an infection, um, and, uh, I had a lot of swelling and then that started affecting the baby's heart rate. 
slightly. So they were monitoring me very closely. Like Ryan, what would you say? Every 40 minutes, 45 minutes, they were coming in. Yeah. Um, yep. When and they were is... changing my position, they were changing my position constantly because she would look at my heart. She would look at my heart rate, look at the baby's heart rate, look at my contractions, and then put me in another position because there were certain positions where he was doing well in and certain positions he was not doing well in. Um, so she just kept kind of like turning me and they, they used the phrase, you know, rotating me like a rotisserie chicken, which is like so true. I mean, I was constantly, they used the medicine ball, the pill shaped medicine ball with me. I mean, they, they bended me in all these positions um, just to keep me moving and then also do what was best for the baby. And then Ryan, I don't know if you're going to say something. Yeah, this, I just want to take people through this. So this is Friday night into Saturday morning is when you had the epidural. That was what, Friday evening. Seven. And then, yeah. So then over the next few hours to what, 10 to 12 hours, they kept coming in, checking on you, checking on the baby, checking on the heart rate, turning you over, doing all that stuff. And yeah, and that's when things kind of got real um, throughout that night. It was, like I said, these nurses were freaking fantastic. We, we can't give them their flowers enough. They were incredible. They were amazing. They did a great job checking on you when they had to switch shifts. They did a great job relaying the information. Um, every nurse was absolutely amazing. I have so much more respect for these nurses now. And yeah, I think it was every 30 to 45 minutes they were checking on you because we both thought any moment, okay, things are really going to start to happen. You're going to start the delivery process. We're going to have a baby soon. And so keep going through your story, if you will. Yeah. So at um, 5 a.m. on Saturday morning, they did another cervix check because um, they, they didn't want to do it that often. Basically, after they broke my water, um, you don't want to keep doing cervix checks that often because they didn't want to have and there's more um, room for infection. Um, so they, they didn't do too many, but by the time they did a cervix check at 5.00 AM or no, it was the seventh, it was the 1.00 AM. I was seven centimeters. I was 80% effaced and the baby was at station zero, um, which if you go through all your pregnancy classes, they talk about what that means. And basically your goal is to get to seven, seven, uh, get to 10 centimeters, um, hundred percent effaced. And then station, um, what is it? It goes from negative three is it negative three ryan to to three or is it negative two the two i don't know either way i was at station zero so he was getting there i was getting there um and then by the time they did another civics check at 5 a.m um my progress had halted and actually regressed backwards um due to my infection and swelling i had actually gotten uh, antibiotics and and everything to try to help with, with my fever. And, um, that's when, um, my midwife got, uh, pretty real with me and was like, it's time that we talk about C-section, um, as the best option for you and for baby. So, uh, what was, what was nice about the providers and the midwives and everything is, um, they were like, at, you know, cause I was talking about all my options and, you know, how are we going to know if something changes? Cause they were also lovely. She goes, you will hear my tone change. <laughs> if anything gets, serious you will hear my tone change um into a very serious tone where like you know we're this this needs to happen now um which was really never the case until she really brought up the c-section where she was she could tell that uh you know i was a little not i wasn't even apprehensive about it i, I followed their instruction the whole way um but i was a little like oh, i was so close like i was kind of bummed but at this point i was like whatever is going to be best for um you know for me and baby yeah, his head was also turned a little bit too, which I think made some things more complicated yeah. as well. It just wasn't going to be a clean delivery at that point. And that's when they kind of yeah. said, we came about 80% of the way probably, and we're going to end this right now. And then we're just going to do the complete different process with the C-section. And he had what, about 45 minutes or so until it was like go time. So you said yeah. like 5, 5.15, I'd say about six o'clock or so we were in the ER so what they did was they wheeled you in the ER first and I followed along and they pretty much just were prepping you for probably about 10 minutes. And I'm just kind of sitting outside the room. They gave me a gown to wear, like, um, what are those suits called? Like when you go in a lab type of thing, I don't even, yeah. And so you got that, you got to put it over your shoes. Um, 
I had a mask on. I'm trying to think what else. I basically looked like I was the surgeon, but um, I did not know this. I did not know as the partner and or husband that I get to go in the room with you. I didn't know that. I thought it was an operating room. I'm not allowed. Um, but yeah, no, as the husband, you are allowed to be in the room. And so be prepared. Uh, when I walked in, there was a curtain basically from your chest or stomach straight up. Uh, so you couldn't see down. And But they brought me in to the door and I can just see you like laying there. And I'm like, I don't know what's going on here. I'm not even going to look over there. <laughs> so I did see some like lines drawn um, with like Sharpie. And uh, yeah, I just kind of cut my head down and they pulled up a chair next to your face. So we're both kind of behind the curtain and we both can kind of see. We didn't get a see through curtain. We wanted, we wanted the, the yeah, non they, option. <laughs> they offer, do you want to see through? I'm like, we're, I think we both was like, hell no, no, I don't want to see like any of this. I, I want this to be a positive experience. I don't need to be traumatized the rest of my life. Um, so yeah, so just know as the partner, you get to be there and, and just do this with them, which I think is really nice. Cause you know, even if it's scheduled or not scheduled like ours, I mean, that's quite um, a roller coaster of experiences and emotions and everything you're going through. And it's, I mean, it's the delivery of your baby. So I guess it makes sense that I was there. I guess I just didn't realize that I was going to be in the middle of an operating room with the operation happening. Um, but yeah, I didn't like, realize like that room. you were, I didn't realize that you didn't know you wouldn't be there. I thought you, I, I, I mean, I, I knew that the partner is always there. Yeah. I didn't know that. I just didn't know. I mean, I don't know. I either, I never thought to ask and, or I knew we were going to go natural delivery and I just didn't really dive into the C-section process. Maybe perhaps as much as I should have. Uh, but for anybody that doesn't know that now you do. Yeah. And, um, another thing, um, I will mention that was just so I'm so fortunate and so lucky is my mom was there. My mom is a, uh, labor and delivery postpartum nurse, and worked at the hospital that I um, delivered at. And um, she had opened it up to us in the beginning to come out and like be supportive. And I said, let's see how things go. Maybe, you know, maybe we'll we'll have you come and, and spend some time. But I think, Ryan, after the Foley bulb in, induction, we we called her up and we were like, you, you should probably come and just, uh, and be here. And she was very supportive. Um, allowed you some time to kind of, you know, run home, take care of the dogs, uh, at get one some point. food. I stepped out and went to get some food for us. Yeah. And yeah, as the guy, I mean, like you gotta be around. Um, but it does help to occasionally just step out, clear your mind for 20, 30 minutes, you know, get some good food or whatever. Cause you know, with the hospital, they take care of you with the hospital food, which is if you just say the least, I guess. Um, but yeah, I still need to eat something and, Got to yes, you got to pack stuff in your bag, which we can talk about after this. But um, obviously, not packing entire meals. So I did step away, got some dinner, brought it back, just kind of keep tabs on you and just hang with you the whole time. But yeah, yeah, having your mom there was was really nice. It was one of those things where I wasn't sure when we first kind of talked about who do we want in the room, and then it was kind of like when we started to learn more things about the possibility of things that could go wrong, not, not the likelihood that it go wrong, but the possibility is like, I don't know, all hands on deck and I perform more hands, especially ones that are experienced. And so, um, if anything were to possibly go awry or wrong, um, you know, I'd like to say we all would have been prepared, but if someone's panicking, we have someone else to help. And just, I don't know, I figured an experienced extra pair of hands would have and could have been very helpful. And I'm, I'm glad that she was there, especially for the support. And she was just crashed in some rocking chair. You know, she was comfortable though. She didn't complain. And, you know, she'd look at the monitor and she'd say, okay, things are looking good. And she'd, you know, ask the nurses questions too. She was very, cause that was her job. I mean, she did that for, you know, 40 plus years. And, um, she knew, and then she even knew like the midwife that was there the morning that I was, I was delivering, um, mm -hmm. you know, through the whole thing, she knew everybody and, um, it just, it just made the whole process very, we felt like kind of taken care of, um, in an extra way since she was kind of there watching and guarding and making sure they were doing the right thing. So, 
but she was not allowed in the uh, operating room with this. No, no. At that happening. point, at that point with the C-section, there wasn't there wasn't a need. You know, that was a me and you thing. And I think that's mm-hmm. what I wanted to make sure you you had and we had was it was still our experience. It wasn't that my mom my mom wasn't like a part of the experience. She was just there for really for just us our our comfort. She wasn't interrupting our experience. It was mm-hmm. still you and me. Um, the whole and that time. did allow me to step out and go get dinner or just go. There were times I went for a walk. I'm just sitting in a hospital room for 24 seven for a few days. So it was like knowing that your mom was there. I was like, okay, I can step away for 20 minutes and I'm going to be fine. I don't you know, feel bad or if something goes wrong or something like that. So, but yeah, so let's, let's get back to the operating room. So you were in there for about an hour total, right? You want to go through that process? <laughs> it's like, do I remember it? I mean, I re- it was, it's not like it's a blur, but um, you know, they were all, everyone's telling you their names. They're talking to you. They're kind of wiping you down, getting you all ready. Um, I'm apparently allergic to um, the, the antis, antis, antiseptic or the the cleaning solution that they they put on you before surgery. So they were like, I just remember them like trying to find a bottle of alcohol, <laughs> like clean my belly with. And, and I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> what are they going to use to like cut me open with if they can't find anything? I was like, Oh my, cause they couldn't find a bottle of alcohol. I just remember that it was so funny. Um, but you know, they're talking about what they're going to do and how long it's going to take. And there's just music playing in the background, which was cool. Um, but everyone was just so nice. Um, and, uh, you know, I just was waiting for you to kind of get there and, you know, they're talking, you know, at this point they've started and they're just, they're talking and you're, you hear what they're saying and, and I'm asking the nurse, does this look all right? What does this mean? What, is, what, is, what does that mean? Um, and then you can kind of, you know, feel them tugging on you, which is just so you don't feel pain, but you just feel them, you know, tugging and pulling the baby out. And, you know, I was getting so emotional because I knew they were getting to that point where you're about to like hear him. Cause you, I, I don't know if they said that they, they saw something, but they were they, like, I could feel like them pulling him out. And then all of a sudden you start hearing him cry mm. and it was just like the most emotional thing ever. Just, you know, I was like, Oh my God, I'm about to, we're about to meet our son. Like, this is, this is crazy. I was, I, I just remember started crying. I was just couldn't contain myself. It was, you know, I'll never, I don't, I don't want to say I'll never experience it again, but I mean, I'll never experience it again for the first time. That was just, you know, yeah, this little thing that you've been growing for the past nine months is now, you know, outside in the world so yeah crazy experience so that. yeah that was at 7 13 a.m uh our baby boy brooks was born um yeah what what an experience you, you just hear the cry because we couldn't see through the curtain so all you do is hear the cry uh, we're just dying to see what he looks like and it's, they take a few minutes to do whatever they have to do real quick and then they yeah they have to like suction you know kind of get some stuff off of him and they clean them up a little bit but yeah and then, then the process after that is they bring him over to the side there's a little table they get his weights um i got to cut his umbilical cord and I, they gave me some cool photos like immediately i got did some you see my placenta at all because they had to take the placenta out so i wasn't they... looking for it that's for sure i was not looking around <laughs> <laughs> I was not trying to look at anything. I just wanted to see the baby, make sure he was okay. Laser focus. I'm not looking around the room. I don't need to see your stomach cut open. I don't need to see any of that stuff. Um, I was purely focused on him. Plus slightly nervous and gotten the umbilical cord. Never done that before. Um, Cause you didn't want to do it. I asked well, you in the beginning. Yeah, I was unsure. I was just kind of like, I didn't, I don't know. I didn't want my first experience on my son to be like gushy and gory and bloody. And so I was like, I don't know. I was like, I don't know. I, but you know, the fact that I did it is it's cool to say it wasn't that bad. It was really, wasn't that bad. And, um, I would recommend it for any guy. If you don't do it, no big deal. I wouldn't say, you know, you're gonna lose sleep over it. I haven't thought about it since, but it's cool to say I did it. I got pictures of me doing it. All the I nurses think, will, they'll, they're like, where's your phone? They'll yeah, like, yeah. They're taking pictures and all, everything. That was cool. So I got to see our baby before you did, because you were still laying there, obviously behind the curtain. So while they were kind of prepping him and getting him ready and whatever else they do, I'm trying, I'm drawing a blank of whatever else they do with him besides his weight and his length too. Right. Um, they do the length they have to do like there's, so there's about seven things that I don't know they don't do it all at once, but there's a, a handful of things that they do to the baby that you can opt in for. You don't have to do it but you can but it's like getting i think a vitamin k shot 
um, eye drops. Um, they do a couple things for him. Um, right. And they like do some of them, right. They do some of them immediately. But like you said, some of them are kind of like later that day or within like a few days or something like that. And then, yeah. And then they wanted to chest to chest immediately. So they brought uh, our little skin boy to skin. over skin to skin, skin, to skin <laughs> chest to chest, the skin to skin, um, which is basically on the chest. So yeah. they brought him over to you and they laid him on you uh, immediately. And what was that moment like, like for you? Oh my gosh, it was, it was beautiful. And we, and we have that captured, which is like, just so amazing. You know, you're right next to me and um, they're handing him to me and putting him right on my chest. You just see my, my face says it all. I'm just like, you know, he's crying. It was crazy. He was crying. And then as soon as they put him on me, he stopped crying. Mm -hmm. It was just, you know, you hear that happen and you're like, that's not real. Like that's not, you know, it happened. It's just so crazy um, that they know, or they, they can just sense, you know, like who they're, who they're back on in that comfort. Um, yeah. It was, it was an experience like none other. I will it just, it was so beautiful. So as you were doing skin to skin, they were kind of like sewing you up. Right? Yeah, like, they were still yeah. sewing me up. Again, you can't feel anything. Um, I will say with, you know, C-section and uh, doing skin to skin, you can do skin to skin immediately. So make sure you localize that if you are getting a C-section or, uh, you know, unless there's something wrong with the baby or you, that, that might be delayed. But if everything's okay, then you should be able to do skin to skin immediately. Um, um as soon as you get the all clear. Mm -hmm. And so, like we said, he was born at seven 13. Everybody's healthy. Mom's healthy. Baby's healthy. Um, amazing experience, amazing moment. And I'm trying to recall, they, they put him in that little plasticky thing, whatever you want to call that little thing, the incubator. little incubator thing with, uh, he's swaddled and everything. And, um, I say what about eight o'clock or so. So he's born at seven thirteen, around eight o'clock or so. We kind of went back to. We went back to the delivery room, and I stayed there for about two hours, um, for no or no, yeah, two hours to recovery, mm -hmm. and then they wheeled us um to the postpartum section. Right, and in the delivery room right after is when I did skin to skin with him as well, which is pretty important. That's a cool moment as well to experience as a new dad. And yeah, so after that, we went to that postpartum room that you were talking about and it got real. I mean, your parents, <laughs> you are freaking parents, but you have amazing support system. So use it, um, yeah. definitely use the support system, uh, whether it's your family coming in and or the nurses, um, take advantage of it. Cause it's a really big and I won't say traumatic, but it's a really, really big experience for sure. It throws you right. They throw you right into it. I mean, it's like, I mean, they're there to help. Um, but you're learning how to change your diaper on the spot. You're dealing, I mean, it's just trying to breastfeed if that's what you're going to do. Um, oh my gosh, it's, uh, learning even how to hold him and yeah. how to swaddle him. I mean, yeah. we, we had them show us how to swaddle him there. Um, yeah. So, so <laughs> oh, I, I. I, you call me the master swaddler now, which yeah. I appreciate because I freaking practice that. Um, if you can practice swaddling beforehand, that would be wonderful. Um, practice on something that moves as well too, if you can. Um, yeah. Even That's the key. Move. When you're practicing on a doll, it's not right. picking, you know, being and Houdini. At 3 a.m. who's screaming um, and he's moving and you have no sleep. So you got to keep your patience. You got to try to swaddle. If you can swaddle them right, wow, it helps like almost immediately. And we're still doing that two and a half months later. We're still swaddling them and it still helps a ton. So learn to swaddle. Um, that's the real deal. And, or I don't know, is it, is it too early for an Ollie? No, you can probably get an Ollie, right? If you really wanted to do that I, as well. I the guess ollie. I would still just start with the swaddle. I would, yeah. you know. So, the, sure. so real quick for people wondering what the Ollie is, the Ollie is basically like a cheat code for a swaddle. It's just got like the Velcro kind of up and down. So it makes swaddling super easy, but uh, yeah, learn to swad swaddle. I think um, one of the reasons or the reason that recording this episode is to really like help people and guide them through this process um, and teach them things that perhaps they don't know. Let's talk about the whole breastfeeding situation, um, if you will. I know that was a situation that we learned a lot uh, after the delivery because 
yeah, and immediately the he's got to eat, right? Um, yeah, he's got to eat, and I'm also at this point, you know, recovering from a C-section, so I'm not even, you know, able to sit up by myself, or you know, I had to wait 12 hours to get up to walk um, before I could even, you know, do anything. And then now I'm trying to take care of, you know, a baby that needs to eat. So um, your milk does come in delayed uh, after a C-section, or they say it does, and your milk for the first like two, three days is considered is colostrum or actually like, I think it was the first five weeks or five days, sorry. It was colostrum, which is a higher fat, thicker milk, um, that is yellowish. Um, and it's, you know, you have to work to get that out. I mean, I worked so hard to, um, you know, just self-express breast milk. Um, I was hand, hand expressing constantly because he just wouldn't latch. Um, breastfeeding was a complete, um, just, just didn't happen for me. I tried so hard. I had nurses, lactation consultants come in. My mom's a lactation consultant. We worked tirelessly trying. I to never seen you work so hard at something. I mean, rightfully so you're trying to feed our baby, literally feed our baby to keep them alive. I was falling asleep and... trying to like get this to work. It like, was I... very stressful. It was very, very stressful. Um, I want people to, to kind of like understand that this you just had a baby and you think it's like the most magical moment ever. And and it is, but then like some real, real stress came right after that, trying to see, see you feed him. And I, I'm, I feel kind of worthless, right? I can't feed him. Not much I can do yeah. about it. And just trying to see you, see you just practicing and trying and trying and trying and just struggling. And then obviously he's gradually losing weight. He's screaming because he's hungry. Um, it's, it's a very difficult, uh, process. And I, I want to be clear too, how you said with C-section it's delayed. It's not delayed a few hours, it's late a few days. And correct me if I'm wrong, Kristen, is because like, because you didn't deliver vaginally, like the trigger wasn't there for your body to start producing. Yeah. It's something, yeah, it's something like that, that, um, some, some the hormone like wasn't released or I don't know, whatever it is that, um, and you can, you can get your colostrum, you can collect colostrum ahead of time before you before you deliver. So you, mm. your body is collect, is um, producing colostrum and you can stimulate that before you go into labor. Like you could do that during your pregnancy and you can collect, collect it and save it, mm. um, which is what one of my friends did. And so she had, she had some saved up um, to use for their baby, which was like crazy to hear about. So I guess, some, you know, you can look into that if you're concerned. Um, but I just, I worked really hard um, and when you say really hard, I mean, it was for like a few drops. So we were thrilled with like these little syringes, just putting a little bit in his mouth, hoping he would eat something. It was, um, there's no way to know. It was like, is he even eating enough? This is I, had a med- I had a cup, like the little medicine cup, little, you know, that you, you know, do like liquid, you know, NyQuil in or whatever. Like I had a or Dimetap yeah, or I had a little <laughs> medicine cup and I was expressing my milk in t- from my breast into this cup and we were getting a syringe and syringing it into his mouth. And, and all that was in it was basically all was that was in it was basically like what would be left if you took a shot of something. And that's how little it was. It was just like, like around like the ring on the bottom of it. It wasn't yeah. like filling up or anything. It was very little. And I know that was stressful and he was screaming and crying. He's hungry and obviously losing weight as babies do after yeah birth. not to mention everything that like my body's going through because him and I are both wearing diapers at this point mm-hmm. <laughs> you know it's not the most glamorous thing you're trying to figure out your your body again and I'm so swollen uh my I was so swollen that like my my legs were like just even my it was all the way up to my thighs like I was so incredibly I couldn't wear shoes luckily I had those ridiculous flip-flops that I bought that I had had those to wear um but I just like wore socks for the most part, but yeah, it was, it's just a lot. And so I know Ryan before, um, you know, we even knew about the delivery, like we were still in the pregnancy and we talked about guests at the hospital and like people coming to visit and stuff. I had warned you, I was like, I don't know if we're going to want that many guests coming or, you know, people coming in and out. Cause there's a lot going on. And I guess, would you say you understand that now? Yes. I, I do. I think, 
it's a mix. I'm really happy with who came and why they right. came. I think it all, it all played out fine, but like, but the visits should be short and they should be right. kind of like focused to like a really small time. hundred percent. Yeah. And so that's what I'm getting at is like, just make sure when you have your time at the hospital, like worry about yourself and not like, Oh, oh so-and-so is going to feel so bad that they can't, you know, can't come see the baby. It's like set it, set the schedule for you, not for other people. Um, and like do it when you're ready for, for people to come visit and, you know, make it, you know, this is when you come, this is when you leave. Cause people are going to want to come bring you food and stuff, but, um, you know, you're going to want to rest when you can. And one thing I think I, I want to make sure we hit on, I'm sorry to bring it up, but is like the pain that you were in afterwards, um, oh. with like the whole like gas situation from the C-section is, yeah. were you aware of this? No, I didn't know. That. I mean, I knew with surgeries that like I've had like knee surgeries before and stuff where they do like fill it with air so that they can, you know, get in and see so they can clean everything. I had no, no idea with an abdominal abdominal surgery that they fill you with air. Um, and I had I'm trying to wipe that from my memory, Ryan, <laughs> I had so much gas that was not leaving my body. Um, and one of the scary things with um, C-section or even in having a, a vaginal labor as well, um, is going to the bathroom for that first time. And I had, I could not go to the bathroom. Nothing was, I was peeing fine. Um, but as far as, um, the other, the other option that was just non-existent. And then I did not, ha I had gas, but I couldn't get it out. Um, and it got to the point where my belly still looked like I was like eight months pregnant. Um, my belly was not deflating. It was as hard as a, a drum and they were getting concerned because it was what day, by day, end of day two. Yeah. And just to kind of like back you up here is like when you were telling this to the nurses and like, they're like, oh, when I had a C-section, it was, this was terrible too. I know exactly how you feel. This was the worst. So like what you're saying, you didn't know about, I didn't know about, but it's not uncommon either. It no. apparently doesn't happen necessarily to everybody, but it's not uncommon. And when it happens, it's extremely painful. Yeah. It got to the point where it was like 10 o'clock at night and I was crying and I was like, I need, I need some type of relief. And so they can do, um, oh my gosh, what, what do they do? Basically they give you something and they put it up the other way and <laughs> it helps, um, get, get a suppo suppository basically and help i mean it's embarrassing to say but if that helps somebody that is an option and there was just they were giving me they were giving me as far as my pain meds oxy oxycodone um gas x and ibuprofen on like a set schedule because they give you the gas x and they give you gum to try to like get the gas moving but nothing was moving and then they did that and it and it finally i think like the next morning it helped um, I mean, I wasn't like relieving gas, but it was helping these gas. I was getting these gas pains with my, you know, with having a C-section. It was absolutely terrible. Yeah. And then on top of that, you're trying to feed Brooks and that's yeah. a struggle. And it's just, it was, um, and then I didn't eat for like 24 hours either. I was just not, I, yeah. was, I couldn't eat and I was weak. I was just, yeah. The first 24 hours is. I'd say even like 48 was, was yeah, 48. really, yeah, it was, it was difficult. It was, it was amazing. We're so happy to be parents, but it's like, you can't take a breather. You can't just kind of be like, look where we are. Look, you know, you, you don't have those moments. It's like, you well, even the first three next, days, right? the, fir the first two and a half days of like the labor process. Mm -hmm. And then once you have the baby, it's like, you're still throwing in. So it's like, that was, that was a lot. And you're exhausted. There's no one yeah. sleeping. You're obviously not sleeping. I'm, not sleeping either. So everyone's tired. Yeah. You, it's not like you're coming into this well rested. <laughs> it's yeah. not even, that's not happening for anybody. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah. So I think one of the greatest things that we did was what don't was donor milk. Right. I mean, it would think we kind of was just like, we need to get him fed. We're not playing around anymore. Um, you know, your milk wasn't coming in quite yet. Or just like, okay, we got to bridge the gap here until that happens. Mm -hmm. and, and I so, didn't want formula. So you right. have a choice of formula or you could do donor milk. And I wanted him to be exclusively on breast milk, um, not formula. Do you want to explain why you chose that? I don't think I necessarily have a, a big reason for it because formula fed babies are still healthy fed babies. And there's I mean, no- I was, right? <laughs> yeah, there's no like- 
this is better than that. Um, I think it's purely preference. Uh, I wanted to be able to do breast milk because I you know the new, there's nutrients, there's more immunity, there's, you know, things that my body can pass along to him. And so um, I didn't want to get him started on formula when I was going to be exclusively using breast milk. So that's why I wanted to keep it consistent. So mm. formula is absolutely fine. I know a lot of people supplement breast milk and formula totally fine to do, but yeah. I yeah. that may just breast milk, the breast milk, the donor milk goes through a, a whole testing process. Um, so I was, I was happy with, um, the donor milk. Um, I think once we got the donor milk, it was like a weight lifted off our shoulders. Cause we're like, ah, oh, okay. He's eating now. He's going to start gaining weight soon. He stopped crying as much and he was sleeping and it just got like so much, we just felt so much better. And, you know, we can finally feed our child. Um, cause it was a struggle there for 24, 48 hours. And so, yeah, I think, um, just kind of like in the whole thing of like visitors that you were saying, just like feel free to let people know that, you know, mom and baby are healthy or whatever you want to say to anybody. And just, then just kind of like go back to focusing, um, because I'm, I'm just taking myself there. That, that, that few days was, was long. It was long and it took both, it took both of our efforts, hundred percent of our focus to kind of keep making it through. And there was times where I was losing it and you calm me down and then you were losing it. And I tried to calm you down. And, um, it's a lot of figuring out what the heck is going on here. So I just, um, I think I can prepare someone for that. Just kind of mentally prepare for that is, um, it's amazing. It's very happy. It's very emotional. Um, but there's definitely a lot of times as far as like a struggle goes. So just be, uh, definitely be aware for that. And I think um, Brennan, we actually had an extra day. We could have stayed and we didn't, there was one more day. They, they offered yeah. us to stay one more day. And what day did it, we leave? Was it um, on a month? So you delivered on the Saturday morning early. And we early. left on Tuesday. We left on a Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay. Saturday, yes. Yeah, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. I think we left that Tuesday Tuesday morning. Uh, no, I'm not recalling. <laughs> yeah, I know my brain. Um, it's a whirlwind. We had three full days in okay. postpartum. Okay. Um. So, I want to say it was it was a it was Tuesday morning we left. Okay. Yeah, and because yeah, I remember we wanted to take advantage of it. Like these nurses are freaking incredible. Yeah, that's and... why they were coming in at like any time at night. And I was like, Hey, I'm trying to breastfeed. Can you help me? And they would help. I mean, there's mm -hmm. one night where they took the baby for four hours and let us sleep. That was amazing. <laughs> they were like, you all, I think it was the night that I, they are very aware of the mom being overwhelmed. Um, and so they could see, I was at my breaking point with the whole gas situation um, and trying to feed him and lack of sleep. And I think they knew I was kind of like at my breaking point and they were very worried for me. Um, so that's when they offered, they were like, we'll, we'll do the next feeding. Cause he was on donor milk at that point, you get some sleep. And that was like the greatest thing mm. ever, ever. That sleep goes fast too. You get four hours. It felt like 15 minutes. It was like, you were out immediately. Cause you are so exhausted. Yeah. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about the whole C-section process or is there any advice or tips you want to give anybody? And then I want to move on quickly to the, what to bring in your bags, perhaps some things that you packed. Um, that were very I would valuable. say, I would just reiterate, you know, speak up for yourself, do your research, do your birthing classes, know what to expect and be ready for things to change and just kind of like trust in your providers because they're going to do what's best for you and what's best for the baby. Um, and you kind of have to go with it. I know that's not like the, probably the best advice, but, um, it keeps you calm. I'm, a, my, I'm an anxious person. I like to be in control. Um, and I had to kind of like let that, at, I had to keep that at the entrance of the hospital when I walked in that day and know, like I can be aware, I can be informed, but you know, I'm going to have to kind of go with, you know, as things change. I'm not going to be as in control at this point, which is hard for me to do. Yeah. Yeah. Be mentally flexible for sure. And I'm um, just trying to think as, as like your partner, just be there to support you. However, whatever way possible. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, because uh, you went through a lot. I saw you just be a champ and a warrior. I mean, I married you for a reason, and then just my respect for you just went way up even more after seeing that. Um, I was like, whatever you need, uh, I'll help you with. And um, just what what an amazing and crazy and emotional experience. So hopefully that was helpful for somebody or some people listening to this about the the process. Cause you did like, like I said, like 80% basically natural delivery and I got shifted to a C-section. So in a way it's like you almost did two deliveries in one, which. Yeah. I, I just basically didn't get to the pushing part. And I, you know, I did feel, you know, they did describe this, like, you know, when you're getting closer to the pushing part, like this pressure where you kind of have to like, you have to poop honestly. And it was like, I was getting some weird pressure, but it's so hard to tell with, with the epidural too. Cause like there was a point where like I was having the contractions and I had no idea. I was like, is that, Oh, that's a contract. And like, you know, cause that's when they tell you to push when you're like, I think when you're contracting, but I wasn't at the pushing stage cause I wasn't anywhere near it, but I was feeling I was starting to feel like the pressure, Mm. uh, which is what you can technically feel. So all in all, am I happy it went C-section route? Yes, because I think I would have been worse shape having a natural delivery based on how he was turned um, and how swollen I was. So I am better off for it. Yes, the recovery has been tough, but I am taking my time and I am doing it the right way. Um, and you know, they do offer pelvic floor physical therapy at my office. And, um, yeah. Do you want to speak on the recovery real quick? Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's things that, you know, they're going to give you instructions on what to do, what not to do. I was walking as soon as I hit 12 hours post C-section, I was up and walking. Um, and I, they say that's one of the best things that you can do is just keep walking, um, and move around. So, uh, that's what I started doing with, you know, I haven't been doing anything crazy. I just started running this week and I'm 11 weeks out. Um, but otherwise it's just like, and that's slow runs too. You know, you're not just yeah. running sprints and marathons here. It's just, you're gradually getting started minutes, again. You're in there. I'm not even doing like a full, full run. Um, and then other just like low, deep core exercises that are not sit-ups. It's very, it's more so breathing exercises. Um, so do your research, go see a physical, uh, tell it for a physical therapist or look up those exercises because you don't want to start doing like, you know, pull-ups and crunches and all that. Cause I do have app separation. Um, and, um, I, yeah, I had a lot, I have a, you know, obviously a C-section where they cut through seven layers of, uh, tissue, uh, to get to your baby. So that, uh, that's taken a while to get used to. I still have like no feeling in my lower abdomen on the skin. Um, it's very, it's all like numb. Um, and I still have a lot of swelling, uh, and I'm still 11 weeks out. Is there anything you did to help the recovery or the scarring or anything? The scarring, I, um, had a very good surgeon. I got very lucky. You know, you don't get to pick who does your C-section, um, when it's kind of not an emergency, but when it's not scheduled. Um, but luckily I had a really good surgeon and my scar is, very nice. Um, I am doing the, like the deep tissue massage every day. I, um, I don't know the name, the term, I think it's like myo, myo something massage, but I'm basically getting the tissue and the scar. I'm, I'm massaging it out now that it's healed and I'm rubbing out kind of like the, um, the scar tissue underneath, uh, to like help it heal further so that it's not lumpy and it lays flat. Um, so that there's no scar tissue buildup uh, underneath. That's great. Yeah. I re- appreciate you, uh, giving those words of wisdom there. Cause like I said, we learned a lot about the whole C-section process, not just the process, but the recovery and everything afterwards. And we're still learning about it. Like you said, you still don't have feelings there two and a half months later, which is crazy, but I guess it makes sense when you cut through all your nerve endings, right. And everything's starting to kind of gradually come back to you. Yeah. Um, like I have some feeling like I have like it's a weird pain um and it hurt like it's sore but like if I were to like touch like I'm touching it right now it's just like parts of the skin the skin is like numb Hmm. I don't know it's still it's very it's it's like when your foot falls asleep and you can't really feel it very good but you can still feel the pressure 
because all mm -hmm. your nerve endings were cut. So it's yep. like gradually coming back, but then there's pain with the nerve endings coming back um, and growing back. So. Well, let's switch gears here for just a moment. As far as what we packed for the hospital, um, I think this is pretty easy to find if you Google it, like what to bring for the hospital, um, men and women or partners or, or whoever you are, you can definitely find lists out there. Was there anything that you brought that you found was super valuable to you? That's a must have. Um, the clothing that I picked out, I use, I bought like a button down. Um, I did use my own nursing gown so you can pick out your not nursing gown, but your own hospital gown. Um, there's so many options out there, but if you want one that you're going to be comfortable in, um, you can bring your own. That's like, you know, button up in the back and, and in the front. Um, I got mine off Etsy. It was like $36. Um, I know there are a bunch of other ones that are like in the $60 range, which I wasn't about to spend like 60 bucks on something I'm planning on wearing <laughs> once. Um, but, uh, I did live in that for like, you know, a day and a half, like the, you know, the whole labor process. So it was very comfortable. It was black, um, which I don't recommend getting a light color, uh, just, uh, for your information there. So, you know, but get what you're going to be comfortable in. And then, um, I brought my own socks, which was nice for the, uh, post delivery. I had brought a button up, um, like nightgown, uh, got from target, which was nice because of the breastfeeding. I was just able to like unbutton it at the top, um, and then pull it back up as needed. So, um, yeah. And then, you know, you want to bring loose pants. Um, so I brought, I bought like a large pair of like high waisted, like joggers um at one point to wear out i don't know how people are wearing like dresses and jeans like after after they have a baby they're walking out of the hospital with anything in anything nice that was that was not how i was gonna go so get what you're gonna be comfortable in um but i wanted something nice and loose um mm. to wear yeah as far as the guy goes i'm just trying to look i mean nothing really sticks out just super comfortable clothes because you're just gonna be sitting there for a while laying around not doing much so just super super comfortable clothing is kind of like my number one um to say the obvious bring all your electronics and chargers things to kind of entertain you yeah um, i had what like a 10 a 10 foot 10 foot cord yeah yeah you had 10 yeah. foot charging cable because you were stuck in your bed and, and so you don't know where the outlets are and what it's yeah. taking up the outlets Mm -hmm. And I was yeah. able to wear my Apple watch the whole time. So bring your Apple, like bring your watch charger. Mm -hmm. Um, I brought, you know, I wasn't able to eat after I started getting the Pitocin. I wasn't able to eat. So snacks weren't really a thing for me. Um, they would bring me like ice pops every now and then, but before, you know, before that part started, I was able to, but then the post, you know, post delivery, um, you know, we had some like granola bars and, and trail mix and stuff to eat. And then they were, they were bringing you meals and everything. Um, I will say the element helped a ton. You were like making me have that around the clock, which I think really helped with the stay with hydrated. hydrated. Yeah. Yeah. Stay hydrated. I mean, that's going to help you in so many ways. Um, especially cause you're trying to produce breast milk too. And that's going to help a lot with, I think that helped my milk that. come in a lot faster. I mean, I worked really hard at getting my, you know, getting it like, you know, uh, hand expressing to make it come in. But I do think that the element helped because by the time we got home, I was able to, I was, I was pumping and I was getting mm -hmm. breast milk, um, getting enough breast milk to feed him. So yeah, it's take, pretty take amazing. That. Yeah. And, um, like I said, you're going to find all these, what to bring uh, all over Google, um, comfortable pillow. I think we brought our own pillows, which is, I that would highly was recommend huge. Bringing your own pillow was, was he and, and your own towels. Yeah. Yep. It's anything to make you really comfortable. Um, yeah, definitely bring snacks, bring good food, uh, especially if you're not giving birth, if you're not going through, like you said, you couldn't eat after a while, they just kind of cut off your food. So bring food. Um, you're there for a while, bring water bottles. Um, like you said, stay hydrated. So water bottles were great because you kept filling them up. And, uh, I was getting an IV drip of, um, of fluids. So the drinking wasn't as, probably necessary for me, but I was getting an IV and I was drinking. So yeah. I was very hydrated. Yep. And as you just said, element, uh, element T, uh, I know somebody that works there. <laughs> um, 
they are electrolytes. Uh, it's a drink mix, uh, highly recommended taste amazing. And, uh, yeah, electrolytes do wonders, uh, for when you're, when you're breastfeeding. So definitely look into that. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. I, I think anything to make you comfortable, just whatever makes you comfortable and entertain yourself. I think we are pretty lucky that we went in the first day of the NCAA tournament. So I was pretty occupied for those few days where I was sitting around. I picked a bracket and, um, did pretty well, but I don't know. I came in like third. Yeah, you third asked day. me, like, did you ever pick your bracket? I was like, no, <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted you to focus on something else when you're in a hospital. If I know if you pick a bracket, you're gonna be, who won? Um, just trying to keep your mind occupied, but, uh, yeah, I think about wraps up this episode. So this is episode two of our little three part mini series. And then we have just learning everything that we've learned about being a, a new mom and dad, um, which is extremely valuable because we're still learning. Uh, I think every parent's learning every day and I'll just uh, echo, learn how to swaddle. <laughs> That's been a huge key for sure is learning how to swaddle. We've learned some other keys and very valuable information, but uh, we're going to say that for next episode. So Kristen, thank you so much for joining. Thank you for sharing your story as well. I know that's pretty intimate. Um, mm -hmm. It's pretty exciting to know that Brooks is also going to be able to hear this one day. He's going to see this on YouTube. He can see his mom and dad talk about how he was born. Uh, I don't know when that's going to be, but uh, we are a few years away from that. But um, I really do appreciate you taking the time and sharing your experience because this whole podcast is about helping people along their experience, along their journey. And I learned a lot. Yeah, it's all worth it. And it, you know, this isn't to scare anyone, you know, I it wasn't, I don't want to say it wasn't that bad. It wasn't, it, it, it was just something you do. You get, you, you get through it. And, and you were, you were really worried. How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? You were saying that consistently and you did it. Yeah. Yeah. I think even like, you know, when we did the birth class, I remember just sitting there being like, Oh my God, this is going to be terrible. But you know, when you, when you're kind of, when it's happening and it's in motion, uh, you just kind of go with it. You're not really like, I would say as scared. You're kind of just like in the zone and you mm. just, you just, you're going to be fine. Yep. Well, Kristen, thanks again. Really appreciate it. Love you. You're a champion Love you too. and uh, you'll be back soon. Mm -hmm.